This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to thank you for uh, attending this worship experience. I just want to remind you that you can uh, find us on uh, YouTube and uh, also on our website. Uh, the one on our website, the first service, is in the studio. So you're getting a studio service. And the second service is a live service that you're getting the service on Sunday. So uh, be mindful of that and uh, let us go before the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we are so grateful for your loving kindness and your tender mercies that you extend to us each and every waking day. Father, we pray that your will be done in these earthen vessels of clay. 
Father, we pray for, for Betty and Everett uh, Jacobson. We ask that you would continue to strengthen their bodies. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to lead them and guide them into all truth. And Father, we ask for clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Lord, as you've taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today I want to speak to you concerning uh, having confidence in the truth. We're living in an age where truth is very w rare uh, for you to get the truth from uh, people, uh, especially for those that are, are looking for answers in our government. And uh, I just want you to know today that the most powerful knowledge that we can attain is from the Word of God. That is the living truth. It is essential when we take time um, and our stand in times of temptation and suffering in regards to understanding and knowing the truth. Jesus explained that there are some who receive the word of truth with joy, but their faith is only temporary, and when afflictions or persecutions come, they drift away. Immediately they fall away, but they receive the word in gladness, but as soon as problems occur, they fall away. Matthew 13, 20, 21, but he who receives the seed on, the storm, on, the stony, on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. 
For when temptation or tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, he immediately stumbles. So I'm asking that this word will be planted deep in the soles of your heart. Sometimes people have the concept that once they commit their lives to Jesus Christ, then there will be no problems. They have solved all their problems, but that is a misnomer. Affliction was not something that they had signed up for. They wanted success and prosperity in their lives, and not suffering was not a part of the deal uh, or persecution. So when the trials hit and their prayers were not answered according to their will and their desire, they fell away. They stopped believing. They stopped trusting. They stopped depending upon God. It is especially in times of suffering that Satan, as the uh, Apostle Peter said, describes Satan as a roaring lion, seeks to devour you. Whenever you are suffering, whenever you are in affliction, the enemy is coming to devour you. First Peter chapter uh, 5, verses 10 verses 8 through 10. So it is imperative for our spiritual survival that we know and apply what the Bible teaches about our trials. We heard that God loves us in John 3, 16. We know that God loves us. And many of us who are hearing the word have responded to his love by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, and receiving eternal life over the wages of sin, which is death. So we have received eternal life in place of eternal death. God's purpose for those whom he calls to salvation is for their ultimate good and victory over death, hell, and the grave. And uh, we have the assurance that we are going to be with the Lord. Our scripture text this morning is found in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 31. Four verses of scripture will go verse by verse. And verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren, or many brother and sister, many brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified, whom he justified, these he also glorified. Verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, if God is for us, who can be against us? Having confidence in the truth. Having a confidence in the truth is what I'm going to be sharing, you, sharing with you. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Paul says all things work together for good to those who love God to those who have been called according to his purpose. He says that every single thing that happens in your life as a believer is working for your good. All things includes good things, the bad things, the ugly things in this life. For those who love God, God will work it out. God will work out the bad for good. Now look at this, the bad things, the ugly things, it also includes suffering in this present time. We are suffering, the world is suffering, people are suffering all over the globe, as well as tribulations, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, peril and sword. If that isn't enough, please include big catastrophes, pandemics, tornadoes, fires, floods, earthquakes, uh, hurricanes. Uh, you can just make this list, tsunamis, wars, plane crashes, terrible uh, disasters. 
that happens on a daily basis. Add to that the relatively minor frustrations of life, daily hassles. Has anybody hassled you today? Just keep living. <laughs> it may be right around the corner. Hassles, uh, problems at work, car trouble, traffic jams, relational problems, discouraging situations, sickness, death. Here it is. Wait for it. Here's the crescendo. To those who have called, loved God, have been called according to his purpose, every single thing that is happening in your life, God will bring good out of it. It's all about his will regarding our lives, and we gladly praise him. We gladly thank him. We gladly magnify the Lord. Let the redeemed say so. Praise the Lord. We look at Paul's life and every situation that occurred in his life when he came to Jesus Christ and sharing the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it happened for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every situation, every affliction, it helped to promote the kingdom of God. Verse 29 for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, here's another translation. The New Living Translation says, For God knew his people in advance. God knew us. He knew us because we were created in his image and in his likeness, and he chose them to become like his son. God chooses us to become like Jesus, to live a life above sin, to live a life that is pleasing to God, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus might be the firstborn among many brothers who are faithful to God. Look, We, we look at three transitions here. God was and is at work. He foreknew us, number one. God foreknew us in the very beginning. Before we were conceived, God knew us. God knows you. God knows your life and your destiny. Number two, he predestined us. God wanted us to have a continual relationship with him, but we know that sin broke that relationship. Sin cut us off from the experiencing the presence of God in his fullness. Number three, we become conformed to Christ. Three transitions. We become conformed to Christ when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. We know that all things work together for our good because God foreknew us. He predestined us and is conforming us to be like Christ. When I was down on my back for three months in the hospital, it was working for my good. Hello. God brought me to death's door and I had to wait on the Lord. And in that period of time of waiting on the Lord, I had an opportunity to share my story about Jesus Christ to other people that I would not have had had I not been afflicted with heart failure. God raised me up. It was working for my good. Two of these phrases are past foreknowing us and predestining us. And the last of these phrases, phrases, is present and future, conforming us to the image of Christ. We are being conformed to the image of Christ as long as we are walking in the spirit of truth, walking in obedience to God. We are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. God knew in advance when he created us with free will that we would be tempted and yield to sin and make wrong choices. God knew that, and God put a plan in place. 
The problem with free will is our flesh. That's the only problem with free will is our flesh. And God desires us to be led by the spirit of truth. We choose the things that please ourselves before considering pleasing our creator. That's the will of the flesh. Please yourself. Yet God intended for us created in his image and in his likeness to be children of God by virtue of his son's death, burial, and resurrection. God brought us back into relationship. He made a way for us to come back into relationship with him through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Praise God, somebody. And we are, by virtue, children of God. Uh, first, uh, first Colossians chapter 1, 26, 27 says, The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations now has been revealed to his saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of his glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you and me is the hope of glory. This is the mystery. This mystery is the introduction of the Gentiles to salvation. Salvation came by way of Jesus Christ, who was a Jew. It's amazing that he came to his own and his own did not receive him, but to those who receive him, we have been given the right to become children of God. The Gentiles would have the same privilege as being heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ to bring glory to God by the indwelling presence of Holy Spirit. This means that God is revealed in us and Jesus and Jesus is revealed to others by our lifestyle. Jesus within us and Jesus through us being revealed to others in regards to how we live our lives before an unbelieving world. First John chapter three, verse two, it says, and this is the message that I'm giving you, um, translation, but friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God, and that's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him, and in seeing him, become like him, all of us who look forward to his coming, stay ready. Stay ready, people. Stay ready with the glistening purity of Jesus' life as models of his own. Verse 30, moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. Your Amplified Version says, And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. To those whom he called, he also justified. And justified, or justification, is being acquittal of, from your sins. You being found innocent, made righteous being put in right standing with God. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, meaning being raised, raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. We have been justified and we have been glorified with the person of Holy Spirit. God knew that man would sin and yield to temptation and he laid he had in place the Redeemer, his son, to bring us back into full relationship. He knew that the enemy would attempt to claim them and claim you and I for himself, and that would call for holy sacrificial blood offering for our sins. All who were created in the image and likeness of God, they had to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, whereof John 3.16 declares that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God did not send his son to condemn the world because the world was already under condemnation, but that through him we might be saved. 
His good, he has invited us to join him in eternity with incorruptible, sinless, and glorified bodies. His call to us is from sin, death. The wages of sin is death. So his call to us was from sin, death, to justification, which means that we were acquitted of our sins. From justification to sanctification, which means that we've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And from salvation to sanctification, which means that we've been set apart for God. God has set us apart. We are in the world, but we're not of the world because of the blood of Jesus Christ in our lives. We say yes to God and really mean it. We're on our way. We are on our way. It is a process as we daily look to him, the author and finisher of our faith. We address the issues of life with eternity in view. Glory to God. We look at life with eternity in view. We're headed somewhere. We're headed out of this world into the next world. Each day we get a little closer as we walk in the spirit. Verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, who can be against you? Can anybody be against you if God is with you and if God is for you? This verse reminds me of being a member of a very large family that has a reputation of having a, uh, each other's back. Having a large family with, with, with a, a good family, a, a good loving family, it's a blessing to be uh, from a, a large family who loves one another. Whenever a member is facing opposition or, uh, or opposing foe, the members of the family will stand with piercing eyes ready to face the opposition. I come from a large family. Hello. My family had a reputation. And if you messed with me, you had to mess with the rest of the family. Hallelujah. The question was asked, who are they? Someone answered, hey, they are the victory family. Aren't you glad that you're part of the victory family? You have victory in Jesus Christ. You don't want to tangle with those victory family members. Hello. In our relationship with Holy Spirit, the word of God, Jesus, you and I can face our foes. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, no weapon formed against us or against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So God has your back, brother and sister. God has your back. Psalms 37, 17 says, For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. As long as you are doing what you're supposed to do as a believer, God has your back. And the family of God has your back. And the people of God are praying and, and supporting you in your efforts to maintain your relationship with Jesus Christ. We say to these things, glory, hallelujah. Greater is he that is within me than he that's in the world. That's what we say to these things. God is in us and greater is his spirit in us than he that's in the world. Your application and I'm closing. We are never ever without support during our greatest challenges in life. You may feel like nobody cares, like nobody understands, but I want you to know that someone somewhere in the body of Christ has had to endure the same suffering that you're enduring right now. The same afflictions that you're experiencing right now. Someone in the body of Christ has had to endure that. You're never alone. You're never without support. And we support you in your recovery in Jesus' name. 
Number two, our support doesn't come from human endeavor, but from the will of Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come into our lives to lead us, to guide us into all truth. It is a rarity for someone to care and put their life on the line for another person without the knowledge of God. It's very, very rare that a person would, would sacrifice themselves for you. But it's the way that the body of Christ functions. We are connected. And if you're suffering, we're suffering. And we pray for each other. We support each other in their trials and tribulations. So I pray this, this day that you will have confidence in the word of truth, that you will have confidence in the word of God. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. That is the word of God. That is the living word of God. You are in the will of God. Stay in the will of God. And God will see you through your trials, your tribulations, and bring you to a place of glory and honor. And I pray that the peace of God, which surpasses human understanding, will rest upon you and keep your heart and keep you confident that he is working out his plan for your life until we reach the perfection of being conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. I love you and peace be with you. And for those of you who have not made a decision, I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to you in a way that you can comprehend and understand the reality of God's love for you. God bless you and may he keep you in the center of his will until we meet again.